my pal is here. <laughs> Jeannie sent me this. Hey, I think, I think we're on to something. You, kitty. Kitty's had a rough morning. The neighbor cat came over, and thank goodness there was a screen up in between, or it could have been a bloody mess. How dare she be in our house? How dare she be in our house? So funny. Don't bite me. Okay. Hey, everybody. Today's going to be fun, and I can tell you what's coming up, too. Um, but in the meantime, yes, we are dying here in uh, in Livermore. I think it's the hottest. Maybe Chico wins, you can tell us, Leslie. But look at this. Oh, my gosh. Um, Livermore, the old record was 116, which was set the day before. Um, when I, We looked up the hottest Livermore's ever been, and it was in 1950, and it was 115. So, and I wondered if what this was going to start happening, and it is, roads are buckling and things like that. But I was thinking about that this morning, and I go, okay, how many of you remember these things, right? Mom, mom would put us in those. We could run through the sprinkler. We could do whatever we wanted to do. And I had the little ties on top and all that. I found this on Etsy and I tried to look real carefully at the, look real carefully at the price tag. And I think it was 99 cents. And that rings a bell for back in the good old days. I don't think it was $1.99. I think it was 99 cents. Um, so what do you do when it's this hot? What do you do? do. Okay, so you get out a puzzle. If you have never had the joy of doing a Liberty puzzle, put it on your Christmas list. If your kids, if your kids want to get you something, um, they run about $100. I'll tell you straight up. They're wood. They're laser cut. And um, they will take you quite a while to put together. So I haven't done this like in two or three years. And I thought, that's what I'm going to do. Rather than just be a sloth on the couch, that is what I'm going to do. So now we had to do some kitty training. <laughs> and there she is. She got the memo. <laughs> so oh, I'll bet it's hot in Manteca. But the other thing is I've been to this puzzle factory. Again, it's called Liberty Puzzles. And um, they have what they call the wall of shame. And if your animal, typically it's a dog, eats one, they have an aroma to it, and it is wood, they can replace that specific piece, I'm, I mean, for, for a price, not that bad though. And, but, but in order for them to do it, you have to send them a picture of your dog and then it goes on a big wall, as big as my wall here behind. It's called the Hall of Shame. Wall of Shame. <laughs> the Wall of Shame. But they can get that puzzle piece back for you. It's in the Boulder area. It's a kick to go there. You know, it's a kick. And I was actually going to buy myself a new puzzle just because I felt like I wanted to treat myself. And the one I decided on buying, I went into my cupboard and I had gotten it a couple of years ago. And the reason I got in my cupboard was I called Robin and said, get over here and get a Liberty puzzle. It's just so hot. <laughs> and in my sewing room, you think, okay, great. I can sew in here. Now this room doesn't cool adequately. I can work in here till about the end of this. Um, and actually, when we get into the big rodent rid next week, um, we're going to have an interior attic fan put in in here. So hopefully that helps a little bit. So Yolanda, I'm going to tell you about, I was not a puzzle person at all. Absolutely at all. And it was Dale Fleming, uh, the six minute circle gal, and Laura Nouns, who's been on the show, that got me hooked. <laughs> So thank you. Um, I also, oh, and also they can do custom ones. So I have one of my grandbabies. Um, Adair's done one for Jerry of the two kids. It, it's, it's a fun Christmas gift. Again, it is a little costly. Okay. Um, I got an email from a dear friend of mine from way back. Her name is Jerry Sirota. And the kids grew up together. 
um, Lydia, Sarah, and Adair. They were three peas in a pod. Well, um, um, Jerry, what's your name? Jerry, what's your name? Bought one of my dad's quilt frames. Well, in fact, her husband did. And she, I got an email from her, and she said that she can no longer hand quilt. All right? So she is up to sell this. It is made out of hard rock maple. It is designed around closet rods, so you can have different like length rods at a minimal effect. You can work with it flat for people on both sides on an angle. We're on the back side of it just for the picture. And then see that front leg on the bottom right? On both sides, those are on um, a swivel so that you can fold it up, push this thing against the wall. So anyways, I have no idea what her, um, what she's asking. She's down in Newport Beach. I'm going to tell you right now, it can't be shipped. My dad has to, had to use to build crates for him out of wood. So can't be shipped, but she's down in Newport Beach and um, she used it a lot. And if it's at all ratty, all you need to do is get a 4-0 steel wool and an oil and, and put it, Watco, Watco, clear Watco, and put it on it and it will be just fine. And she said she actually has a bunch of different length pole sets. So you can contact me at A-L-E-X-A-N-D-R-S-N at Gmail, and I will forward you to Jerry, all right? I, I want it to go to a good home. That's what that's what I wish. Uh, yeah, I, I don't need another one. I've got a couple here, and I just need to get it somewhere where someone can use it. Speaking of my email, a couple of you have had some issues signing up, and just contact me directly. I will not be able to help you, but I will um, get you to someone who can sort it out. There's just been some hiccups, so we don't really know what's going on. But the last thing I don't want is for you not to be able to sign up for thequiltshow.com. So again, my email for all things, A-L-E-X-A-N-D-R-S-N at Gmail. Okay, somebody put it up there. Okay, great. Um, oh, Wanda. Wanda loves the quilt puzzles on TQS. That almost cost us our marriage. <laughs> Wanda, I just want you to know. When John came on board, he found out that you could do these puzzles. And I'm like, what are you doing? That has nothing to do with quilting. <laughs> uh, one of my finer um, spousal moments. <laughs> and, and it is like one of the most popular things. <laughs> it's hilarious. So what we're going to do today. Oh, oh no, I've got some show and tell. I guess on a show I did these sticks earlier. And a couple of you, like way back in the day, um, a couple of you sent me some pictures of what you've done. So, oh, but this is, before we get there, this is Christine's um, rooster that she made from Dee's class. And um, I, I did Christine, I forwarded it to Dee and she was very happy to see it. Uh, that was a two weekend class. I believe the kits are gone and um, I, I just think these are flipping adorable and a wonderful autumn, uh, autumn thing to have in your house. Okay, so Chris sent me these two pictures, and this is what she did when the show aired, and I'm going to show you how to do this today, okay? And then she put it together like this. Well, she has to put it together like this. And uh, Chris, I want to I want to say something to you. First of all, I want to say I'm going to take you. I'm going to take it off and put it back on me. This one here, that's basically what she's emulating. Look at my inner border, and I did it by value. And so here, I love that you have the black and then the normal and then the yellow as an inner border. I think that is exceedingly striking. Um, so well, let me see. And then, oh, and then Rebecca made this, and this was out of Kona's, like a Kona, I think layer cake or something like that very, very small. She said this, she doesn't work this way, but it's, it's counterintuitive. So my guess is she's a traditionalist and she there, she said she, it's still, it's one of her favorite, it's one of her favorite pieces. So that's from a layer cake of Kona. So what I'm going to do today is teach you how to do these. They are really, really easy. And then the neck, and, and I wouldn't, 
I mean, if you want to, if you're bent to make that quilt, have at it. But I'm going to be taking you through some different ideas that maybe it can all integrate together. The next teaching lesson I'm going to do is here. And let me see if I can get like right there. Okay. How do you get the sticks to float? All right. And then if you go up here, how do you get them to crisscross? And so we're starting with a, and then we're going to go to B, and then we're going to go to C, and then we're going to go on to something else. I, I, My prayer is that you don't just jump into this willy-nilly and start throwing stuff together. I would rather have you make little samples, um, which I think is fabulous, and perhaps save your um, oak shots, if you've purchased that, until we've kind of gone through a bunch of stuff, and then you can see what works for you, because we are going to do different things. And um, I am going to show how to do, well, I'll show you this right now. I am going to show how to do the circle maker on the Bernina. And you see, these are sticks too that are crisscrossing and different lengths. And Bernina has given us three that we're going to be able to give away. Now, it's not all going to happen in the next lesson, but this is what's going on in the next couple of weeks. So it's Bernina's... Um, Customer Appreciation Month is September, and so we were talking to Gavin there, and and he said it was brought up that I could show how to do the circle maker, and I know you guys were asking about it, so I think that's pretty generous. I think they run about 60 or 70 bucks, so thank you, Bernina. Okie dokie. Uh, we did chopsticks for our Amateur Valley Quilters Zoom retreat in June. So fun. Rondi, I hope you're staying cool over there. Heesh. Okay. So let me go over, this, this part always makes me nervous. So let me go over to share screen and I have to get rid of these comments so I can see what I'm doing. And then I'm gonna go over here to PowerPoint and there we have sticks, okay? Remember, remember pick up sticks? How fun, how much fun, okay. So here's the quilt that we're looking at behind me. And I would say those sticks are two, those little, is it working? Yeah. Okay, cool. That those are two inches finished. But you can do them any size you want. The bottom line is you start big and then you square down. All right. So here's what we're looking at. You can see in here that there's shots of color and within the shot of color, there's little shots of color. So this is how I would go about doing this. First of all, you cut your square. Let's say we're going for two inch finish, like behind me. I'd probably cut the square at four and then cut it corner to corner. Note, no, not corner to corner. I was gonna say, don't cut it exactly corner to corner. Notice how it comes in at the top from the right and comes in from the bottom on the left. So not, I wouldn't do smack down the center. I wouldn't do it corner to corner. I would just do a gentle cut across on an angle. <laughs> so then I'm going to insert the stick and I'm going to get to that in a moment on how you can make a bunch of sticks to get started with. So the stick is cut at three quarter inch finishes at a quarter inch. Now, shoot, somebody sent me an image and I didn't load it in there. She did sticks and she did her finished, she did larger blocks and her, her sticks were fat and chunky and it was super cute. Doggone it, I'm sorry, I didn't get it in here. So then you can see here that I've sewn together doing the best I can to line up the top and the bottom for minimal waste. Quarter inch seam. I do not think sloppy sewing will fly in this. Now, if this is gonna finish two inches, and I'm gonna say I started off at four inches, or four and a half, or something like that, you can see at the very bottom, I trimmed it as close as I could get to the bottom, making it a, um, a flat line, a horizontal line, okay? And then I did the top, and note that that's probably about an inch and plus, and then the sides. You do not throw anything away. 
Then I cut that top one at three quarters inch wide, and then I have a stick with a slash to go into the next piece. Waste not, want not. But let's say you're starting out fresh. You don't have those sticks. So let's make some sticks. So maybe this is, if it's going to finish two inches, maybe this is four inches. Maybe. Yeah, four. It's going to be a little waste. All right. And then I'm going to cut just like before on an angle. And then I'm going to insert. And by the way, uh, the sticks are being, the red stick is being pressed to the yellow. All right, it's being pressed to the yellow. Otherwise that stick gets too bumpy. So again, um, the stick is cut at three quarters, sewn together. See, this one got a little goofy, but that's okay. It doesn't matter. And then you go and cut yourself a bunch of three quarter inch sticks with the red inserted. So that is actually how I get going before I even do the very first thing. And there you go. It's about that simple. And it's fun, and it's easy, and it's just no big deal to do. Okay, this one we will talk about later, but essentially those sticks are cut, I guess I'm talking about it now, are cut on a very, very soft angle. Um, those sticks are not bias. They are straight of grain. And um, then, you know, there's other stuff going on, which we're going to do down the road. But, but you, can, you can do super uber soft biases. And let's see if we can get back to me. Or no, okay, I wasn't paying attention. You can do, you can do, leave the sticks on the straight of grain if your cut is very subtle, you don't have to do a bias stick. So that's a yay. Keep it very soft if you go down that territory. And I'm wondering on this if I didn't do some. On a, I'm looking. I thought I saw one that was a curve in here. That has a little bit of a curve in it, not a lot. But for the most part, they're straight. The ones to this side are completely straight, all right? So let's, let me get back my comments and see if we have any questions here. Um, do we have sticks cut at three quarters? All right. Again, I would not, um, I would, I would try a couple out and see if you like it. It is a fabulous way to get started with improv. And the ticket here is that on this side, they all finish at two inches, all right? On this side, which I'll show coming up, it's more like a jigsaw puzzle where you have to have everything fit into like whatever. I think on this one, I think two inches was the common denominator. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I said that earlier. John said, Wouldn't, shouldn't you have him practice on something else in Oakshot? Yes, please. Practice on something else. And, and I love that um, I love that up here little samples were made. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, yeah, with the Kona. I, I just absolutely love that. So that would measure two. 16 by 16. Mm-hmm. So that would measure that. Okay. All right. So do we have... Oh, we have a few cool oak shot bundles in the store or left. Where's mine? Because, you know, I went and bought one, too. That's the blues. And I think in the end... What did I do with them? I think in the end, I'll be working with the blues myself. I, I do have the warms, too. But we have a few in, and then we have a couple more coming in. So, you know, and even if you get it and you don't use your oak shot, that's fine too, but they're just beautifully curated bundles. All right. Mice of Bernina. Mice of Bernina. I have one from a class with Libby Lieben several years ago. The circle maker. I love the circle maker. Uh, 
Okay. Could you make the sticks with striped fabrics, Doreen asks. Why not? Give it a try. Right? That's what this is all improv. There is no recipe to any of this. And I'm a little bit scared <laughs> that I'm setting you loose, okay? I'm a little bit scared. So, okay. On Friday, because you're going to have some time to work and play, uh, Lilo and I did a pre-record on... Uh, unusual studio spaces. So can you combine CAFE shot with oak shot? Sure. Why not? I think CAFE's is a little bit, um, a little, I don't want to use the word flimsier because that's negative, a little softer. Um, what you might want to do is put a little bit of just a little bit of, uh, say, Mary Ellen's or just a little bit of starch like the ones from, you know, um, our buddies and I'm doing a brain fart. Um, just a little, just a little bit of something on it. Okay. All right. Any other questions here? I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. I got to look because I'm doing horrible though. I can't think. The heat, the heat's killing me. No. No, here it is. Acorn. Acorn. But with acorn, don't spray it too heavy, right? Acorn. This is my little acorn. <laughs> I have a sprayer, but I like my little one. Okay, new comments. Easy press. That's another one. Oh, hand dyes would be awesome. And that's what this one is. These are Sonia Lee Barrington hand dyes. Okay. Um, they would be awesome. Super awesome. Okay. Yeah, you guys have great ideas here. All right. So, okay. Uh, Friday, we're doing studio spaces. I'm not sure if D is on Saturday. Uh, forgive me, but you will know because we'll put up notices. Monday, John is getting um, lower back surgery. Uh, it's in and out procedure, but we're going to be um, not here Thank goodness he doesn't have to stay in the hospital or anything, but Monday's out, all right? So I'll be back next Wednesday, and I can talk about these sticks, and I'll have to make some step-outs for it, of how I did it, all right? Um, the Chrissy Crossy one, that's, that's, that's the money class right there, the Chrissy Crossy one, because I got that figured out. You want those sticks to exactly cross. Um, okay, D is on Saturday. Okay, great. Have I seen any of these blo blocks done with low volume prints? You know, Joanne, I haven't. Why don't you do it? I mean, the sky's the limit here, right? The sky's the limit. Um, will the circle maker fit on the Q20? No. God, that's a good question. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. But I will tell you this, um, Lisa, a lot of sewing machines have, have these, okay? Uh, so some sort of circle maker or whatever. And when we do the giveaway, we will be directing it to people who can use it, you know, or you could, if you don't have a Bernina, maybe your friend does or whatever. But um, we want to make sure it gets in the right hands, all right? Okay, so I think... We are swell. Um, yeah, keep John in your prayers. That would be nice. And I've done this technique with black and white fabrics and low volume bright color prints. They look great. I don't think you can go wrong with this technique. I think the big decision you're going to have to decide is how big you're going to do your blocks. Okay, I think we're good, people. And if you do have a circle maker, Miss Rebecca, I have a, 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 a tip that I learned from my friend Wendy that I was like, made it all the better. Okay, I am blathering on. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Wendy, enjoy your Bernina, take the lessons. What well, Any machine, any machine, when you buy a machine, you're marrying that store and you need to go there and take all your classes so that you understand the capabilities of your machine. All right? Yes, you can do that. You can make a circle maker with a thumbtack, painter's tape, and a pencil eraser. Works on my machine. 
Okay, we're good. Woo! We'll see you Friday, and we're going to go um, be voyeuristic at people's sewing rooms. See you later. Bye-bye. Stay cool.